Hi, this is Ian, and this is going to be a quick look over of what a tutorial for rigging and created something called Action on Moho is. You may also know this program as Anime Studio Pro, but it changed the uh, name a few years ago. Okay, let's start. So what we have here is a sort of vector version of a piece I made of Eve. I want to use this as a as an example for what a simple skeleton is like. It's not exactly made for animation, like the proportion and the positions, it's not ideal for what to use to animate. But I think to see the basics, it's gonna be working just fine. Now, I'm gonna show you a quick way of how it's done, like how you do vectors. Even though I have it all done, it's just to make things quicker since this is more of an example of how this tutorial will work. Now, if you want to build vectors here, you go here to new layer on this side, and you're going to create a vector layer. In this one, you can go to this little line with the point that says add point, and you drag and click on each point to make shapes, just like this. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the eye, because it's something that's a little trick that's very important on how to make it and it will be very useful for animating things like blink or turning of the eyes. Now, you gotta start with the whites. You can make the points edgier with this or more round. Depends on how you like it. Uh, with this line width, you can make it thicker or thinner and with this one, Hide Edge, you can actually erase the lines. It depends on how you like it. If you want to do lineless animation, you can absolutely do it. Okay, now, we're gonna make a circle. We're not gonna add too much detail because it's not what's important here. What's important is how to do the blink. Now, the next thing you're gonna do when you have the eye the way you want it is you're gonna take the skin color you're using and you're gonna create a shape around the eye. It doesn't really matter what shape it has. You can like later uh, make it so that it doesn't show like in the shape. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this, the create shape option. You're gonna select the white. It will look like this. Then with shift you're gonna select the outside shape. It kinda looks like this. <laughs> then you press just enter, and you're gonna see that you can now, it now shows the edge of the white. And with select shape, you're gonna click it, and in fill, you're gonna lower all of the opacity. And now it looks like this. What, the, what does this mean, you may ask? Now, you can move it like this. It's gonna hide whatever you put inside the eye. So you can just animate a blink. You can grab the circle and say, oh, I want them to look left. Oh, I want them to look right. Up, down. You can do anything you want. Something very simple, but that adds a lot when it comes to the eye animation. You can also use that method for like animating the mouth, you make the interior of the mouth, and then you add the shape outside it, and do exactly the same. So that's really helpful for like that kind of thing, when you want to hide something inside of something else. Now, we're gonna move on, do like this, and we're gonna start with the skeleton. It's gonna be something very basic, but if you want more detail in a new video, you can let me know. Okay, you go to new layer and you create now a bone layer. We're gonna name it Eve. And we are gonna grab all of this and add it here. Oh, look, I have the old from the previous tries of recording. I'm gonna delete that. 
Okay, now we are here. You have to be at zero in the timeline to create. And we're gonna go this side. Add bone. It's gonna be in the same place where at point. So that's very simple. Now, we're gonna start creating it at the center of the body. It's where we're gonna, like, if we click on this bone, we're gonna be able to move all of the body. This is the center. Now, we're gonna continue. I usually do three bones here, but that really depends on the person, like what kind of character you have, what kind of animation you're doing, is it more uh, uh, hard, is it more fluid, like a noodle, that's up to you. You do the neck, and you do the head. Now, this is very important. We're gonna see, with the bone on the head, that it's red, you're gonna notice that the previous one I put is on a darker blue than the other ones. Why is this? This is because the bones work in a way that they parent each other the next one you make. So see, if I move the neck, it's gonna move the head because the neck is the parent of the head. The chest is the parent of the neck and so on and so on. How do you control this? You have to click one see the chest and that makes it the parent of the next bond you make see the shoulder now the arm the hand like this so be careful with that because if you like forget to unclick the hand here and i say i add the shoulder what's gonna happen is i'm gonna move the hand and it will move the shoulder but don't worry if this happens, like if you make the whole skeleton, like if I continue like this. And don't notice that this happened and it's gonna move everything. You can go to this one. You see this bone? No, wait. This bone, where it's one big bone and a tiny one, the parent and the child. This is gonna show you which way all the bones are related. So if you click here. Oh, wait, it's not letting me click it. If you click here, okay, you have to select it first and then go to parent. You can change which bone is to experience. So now I change it to the chest. This way, when the chest work moves, it's gonna move the shoulders and the arms and the head. Okay, now, after you have set all the bones they want, what you have to do is bind each bone to one of the layers. So, we're gonna go to the right hand, hand right. And on the side you'll see that here under fill it's the bone options. You're gonna go to select bone, so you select say this one. While you're on the hand, you select the bone that belongs to that. And you're gonna click Ctrl Shift F. And it's gonna look on this color. Now, since I've already done it, it was already binded, but that's the way you do it. You see, it's gonna look different from the rest. So if you go to the head, the head is gonna be like this. Body is gonna be all of them. I already did this work, but you have to do what I just did. Like you go here and go to the corresponding layer, Control Shift F, and it's gonna do all of that. Now, the next step is gonna be to play around with the bone strength. The bone strength is what makes the bones move a lot more or a lot less. Like the way I like to do it is lower it, not completely, because if you lower it completely, it's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you. Let's go to the timeline. See? It kind of uh, distorts everything. Uh, okay, the distortion happens because 
uh, these ones are too strong like if they are too strong they're gonna affect nearby bones again this all depends on what kind of animation you want to make I certainly don't want those bones messing around with the others I want it to be like a semi-realistic bone structure okay so now that I've lowered them if we go here it's gonna be more more control obviously if you go all the way here it's gonna distort anyways but it's gonna be more control blah blah now the next thing I'm gonna show you is actions what are actions you're gonna deselect any one you have first very important and in zero we're gonna create another bone here the example I'm gonna use is the blink now when you select the bone you have options up here you can show the level I like to do that to know what each action does like this is going to work as a switch for an animation so you don't have to like do it from zero each time you can just move this around and the blink will work automatically then I go to angle constraints I like to have this at 90 but again it's just a personal thing so it looks like this and the only way it moves is blah, 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 blah. Uh, the bone string doesn't really matter here, it doesn't affect anything because it's not tied to a layer. This is gonna be just as an action. Okay, now you're gonna select it and we're gonna go to Window to Actions and it will open this tiny window. We're gonna go here to a new action. And if you have it selected, it will give you right away, like, action name blink. And it will create it. This will turn the timeline blue. This means that this animation is exclusive to this switch we just created. It's not gonna, like, affect the main line of animation. Now, I'm gonna go to 48 and I'm gonna lower the switch. Have the zero be top. So it just does this. This way we can know at which point each movement happens. See, I already have done the blink animation and it works like this. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the head and I'm gonna delete the animation in one of the eyes so I can show you from zero the way it's done. See, now if I do this, it's gonna close only one eye. And it's gonna move part of the eyebrow from sorry, sorry. <laughs> but okay, it's gonna move only one of the eyes. So I'm gonna show you now. What you're gonna do is just uh, change the vectors so that it's her with her eyes closed. It's not some. It's not some big science, but it just works wonderful. Like, you're gonna see it's like a little tedious at first, like moving all the vectors to change what expression she has or what or what she's doing, if she's opening her mouth a certain way. But once you have it done, it's just so fluid. It's not like any kind of other animation I've seen. Maybe, like, it's it has more of the fluidity of a 3D animation but with the charm of it being 2D then you can just uh, go in between frames and fix things that you don't like how they're looking like this you see it's something very quick once you have like uh, the character and you understand how to do the actions it doesn't take that much work and that's really what I really like about Moho it's that you can do a quick animation it doesn't require that much time to do it and you can just uh, 
say, oh, I want to relax doing an animation, which doesn't sound serious, like who will relax doing an animation with all the work it takes. But Moho makes it so simple, so quick, and it gives you so many options to do things that it really makes it like a, a good way to relax. You see, like this. Now, if we go, when you're done doing this tiny animation that belongs to the action, you're going to go to the window, click on mainline, and when you go to the timeline and you try to move this bone, it's just gonna do this animation. So like, if you say, I want to go to 12, and she's gonna have the, her eyes open. And on 18, she's gonna close her eyes, and 24, she opens them, closes them again, and leaves them like this. So see, once you have the action, you don't have to do each blink over and over. You can just use this. And yeah, maybe it seems like a lazy way to do animation, but I think it's pretty cool for when you want to do something and not take like hours animating. Not that I don't like traditional. I do love traditional. I just think this is a very good option for when you don't want to do that. Now, another way to use actions is that for example, we're going to go to the arm, and you watch how it moves. See this part? The way this goes? It's pretty ugly, yes. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna name this arm. We're gonna put lower arm L. Not necessary to show the label of... Well, bone constraints, you can do them if you want. Like, say, I want it to move only to here, and I don't want it to move further. You can do that. It's, it's something that you can do. Now, we're gonna go back to actions, and well, we're gonna click this, and now it's gonna offer us to make an action specifically for this arm. And now we can just do, hey, I want it to move like this, and when it moves like this, I want it to be up, up, so it looks more natural, and I want to go to the lower arm left and modify the vectors so that it looks like it's actually all the same arm. Like this. And if I wanted to, like, I didn't make the arm like that, but if I wanted to add a muscle and the way the muscle works, I could just say, go to this layer and add on the first something like this. And when it goes like this, the muscle goes down, because that's the way it works. See? You can do a lot of things with actions, it really fixes animations and makes it more smoothly. It's I really like it. Like look now I move this in the timeline and it's just gonna work that way. Just like that. Nothing too hard, simple, I like it. Uh I don't think there's anything more I need to show you guys. Again, this is a very quick look around of how Moho works. Uh, if you guys like it, I can make longer videos or something more specific, like one type of animation, a walk, a blink, turn of the heads. You can use actions to turn heads side to side or up and down. So if you guys like it, you can let me know and I will work on making more tutorials of these you specifically want. This is just a test, testing the waters. I hope you liked it and that it helped to maybe want to get the program and try it out. Have a nice day everyone, bye bye.